Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to be doing our fourth winter 2023-2024 look ahead. Now this week's update is going to be a little bit shorter than normal and that is because we are at the end of September now and a lot of new data will be coming out next week as we transition into October. So next up update we do is going to have a lot more data in it it's going to be very interesting to see if the blocking patterns that have appeared in August and September's data does continue. But in today's update, we're going to concentrate on something that is unlikely to change, uh, or at least is well forecasted over the coming weeks and cu coming months, and something we haven't touched upon in the last few winter look-aheads. But we did it uh, in the last few years. Now, this is the QBO, the quasi biannual oscillation. Now, just to get over the sort of background of this, we'll just start by going over to Met Office website where they do have data uh, or they have a page exactly explaining uh, what is going on. So I thought that would be a much better way to show it than trying to explain it in a bit more of a convoluted way. So what is the QBO, you're probably wondering? It is a regular variation of winds that blow high above the equator. Strong winds in the stratosphere travel in a belt around the planet. And every 14 or so months, these winds completely change direction. So westerly or easterly. Kind of similar to how we view the polar vortex, which does oscillate every year. I.e. in the winter for the northern hemisphere, it is blowing in a westerly direction. In the summer, it is blowing in an easterly direction. It's the same for the QBO, but over the equator, and it oscillates uh, in a much longer period of time. This means a full cycle takes roughly 28 months, making it the most regular slow variation in the atmosphere after the cycle of the seasons. Now, we'll skip a lot of, some, uh, a lot of the background to it, but this one here, why is the QBO important, is why we will be having a look at this. Now, the quasi biennial oscillation can affect the Atlantic jet stream, one of the main climate drivers and weather drivers for the UK. Now, the speed of the winds in the jet stream weaken and strengthen with the direction of the QBO. So, from that, we'd infer that an easterly QBO would mean a weaker than average jet stream, or at least more oscillating, more meandering of the jet stream, and a westerly QBO would correlate more with a stronger westerly base, more stormy, unsettled patterns, and more milder conditions from the west. And as I said here, the jet stream is an important atmospheric feature that brings us our weather here in the UK, and the risk of winter conditions in northern Europe can differ depending on the phase of the QBO. When the QBO is in an easterly, the chance of a weak jet stream, sudden stratospheric warming events, and colder winters in northern Europe is increased. Now, when the QBO is in a westerly phase, the chance of a strong jet stream, a mild winter, and winter storms, and heavy rainfall increases. So, we kind of have this pattern where an easterly QBO would infer a higher than average chance of colder weather, perhaps. A westerly QBO, more milder weather and rainier conditions. So we have a look at the background of the QBO, but we actually have to have a look what the latest data is showing. Now, interestingly, the QBO is in the easterly phase. So you can have a look here, This, uh, if we just zoom in on this image. Along the bottom is the direction of the zonal winds. So negative is easterly, positive is westerly, and these are the different pressure levels. So 10 HPA, that's the traditional level we look at for the polar vortex all the way down to sort of 30 HPA, so high up in the stratosphere. And then as that lowers, we get more towards the troposphere. Now you can see here the QBO is technically actually in an easterly descending phase, i.e. the whole of the graph isn't in the easterly point, but pretty much 40 HPA and up is in the easterly phase. So QBO is in a descending easterly phase, and from what we just saw on the Met Office website, that would suggest that there should be an, an above average chance of cold weather, or at least a correlation with that. And this data is from Thursday uh, Thursday at midnight, or Wednesday at midnight. Now, interestingly, you have to look lower down at the atmosphere. It's actually still in the westerly phase. But because of the variations in general weather patterns, we can't really have a look at the QBO as a driver in the troposphere because storms and different seasonal aspects change the wind direction in 
the uh, over the equator on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. So the really only best way to have a look at the QBO is high up in the stratosphere. And that's why this is in the easterly phase, although we do have some westerly winds lower down. Now, this is one way to view it. We can view it in this graph here which is very similar. It shows the pressure levels on the left-hand side, but on the uh, x-axis here is actually time, with the colour gradient showing wind speed. So here you can see the blues are easterly based, the uh, sort of maroon or browny colour, yellowy colour, is a westerly phase. Now this data goes back all the way to the 1980s, and you can see how it is an oscillation. We're flipping between easties and westlies in a fairly robust regime every, as the Met Office said, about 28 months or so. Because see, not every westerly phase is as strong as the previous westerly phase. They're not all the same, and that's the same with the easterly phase. We now we see a very interesting pattern with the QBO a few years ago. Now here in 2019 to 2020, you can see here that we did see an easterly QBO from the 2019, or sort of descending halfway through 2019, and it should have descended more towards the troposphere, or at least lower in the stratosphere, in early 2020. But you can see here, we kind of transitioned back straight to a westerly QBO without an easterly phase. Now some have uh, argued that that contributed to the very wet and windy winters we saw around that period 2019 2020 was a very mild wet and windy with multiple named storms of course as we headed into covid lockdowns but um that again is just a correlation now we'll have a look at some actual data because we can see this in actual numbers in a second but you can see if we go to 2023 you can see a big easterly phase is descending and it pretty much is at around 30 uh, or 40 HP at the moment, and by the time we get to the winter months, you know, November, December, you'd expect this to have progressed even further, most likely down towards sort of the, the bottom level of the QBO. Now, you can see anything under 100 HPA doesn't really follow the oscillation. As I said, that is, is more on sort of daily uh, variables, and then you can see the altitude here. We're looking at 15, 20, 30 kilometers up. So, as the Met Office stated, uh, as we saw in the uh, exp explainer, that an easterly wind would favour weakening the jet stream and a westerly wind would favour strengthening it. So, from all the data we can see here, we, this would definitely actually follow on from the last few winter updates in suggesting perhaps more blocked and more colder, drier weather. But I must put a caveat in there. Because it's not as simple as that. An easterly based QBO doesn't mean a cold winter, and a westerly based doesn't mean a mild winter. Now, for example, if we have a look at uh, the the uh, the QBO in 2018, for example, we were in an easterly descending QBO, and we did see a sun stratospheric warming, and we did see the beast from the east. Now, that is sort of a, a bog standard. Easterly QBO probably did contribute to that stratospheric warming and the beast from the east we saw in early 2018. You can follow it up here and you can see we're very strong easterly QBO, very similar to what we're actually seeing now. So from that, you could infer, oh, we're going to see another beast from the east. But that's not entirely correct. For example, if we go down to 2010, one of the coldest and winteriest months we've ever seen, December 2010, if you look straight up, you can see the QBO is in its westerly descending phase. So you can see here that definitely has some correlations, but it isn't a definite. Doesn't mean we will definitely see a west uh, see cold weather or mild weather either. It is uh, very much, uh, very much still got a lot of other climate drivers. But I did want to have a look at this in this video, just to highlight that there is another climate driver that is definitely favouring some more colder blocked weather. And again, this uh, could be one of the reasons why a lot of the seasonal models we've had a look at in detail in the last few updates has been suggesting more of a blocked pattern. Again, this won't be the only part, the only thing that suggests that, but it definitely is one thing ticked off that is giving indications that we could see something a bit more cold and blocked. Now, this is a bit more of a, a boring chart here, but this is the actual data. And on the right-hand side here, this is the 10 HP. And you can see here, right at the bottom of the screen, we're at minus 35.77 meters per second in a very strong easterly phase. And you can see if we go back to the beast from the east in March 2018 or February, you can see minus 25, minus 21. 
But as I said, if we go back to 2010 and see December 2010, you can see we're coming out of a westerly phase, going into an easterly phase, but still in a westerly phase by this point, around 18 or 6, uh, around the time of uh, the, the December to remember. So you could infer from that, perhaps, because the Eastly was just coming in, the Westly was weaker, and, you know, we could have a look at that, but that is making a, a, a quite a few assumptions there. But we just wanted an evidence that, yes, the QBO is an Eastly phase. It is suggesting that there is the possibility, or a, a more of a possibility, of colder blocked weather, but it's not a def definite. Uh, it could be feeding into a lot of the seasonal model output, but at the moment, it's not a definite, and we'll have to keep a very close eye on it. Because we doing these updates a couple of years ago, we saw in the updates from 2020 and 2021, we were in an easterly QBO. As we head into winter 2021-22, we did see some cold weather, but nothing out of this world. So, yeah, it doesn't always mean cold weather, but it definitely is on the side of cold weather this year. Now, just to finish, just to flesh out the video a little bit more, I want to do something that we haven't done so far in these winter updates, but we did a lot in the last year or two, is going over to the CFS on West Central and just having a little look through what the latest CFS is showing. Now, this will come a little bit more important as we head into sort of later parts of October, November, when the sort of uh, when, when the sort of two, three, four week ahead uh, does have a little bit more weight to it, but we are really we're, we're looking you know, months ahead here, so it's highly unlikely anything will come off. But it'll be very interesting to see what the CFS is developing. Now, if you run through November, you can see that we're in a westerly phase, and you can see cold areas starting to appear across much of the Arctic. If we do continue to run on beyond that into the middle of November, you can see cold air is building significantly over the Arctic, but we're still in a westerly phase with some colder ex exertions on the back edge of low pressure and a bit of high pressure building in there with some brief easterly winds, some frost and fog, but nothing major at all. As we head into November, quite a westerly phase, lots of cold air coming out of the Arctic, combined with mild Atlantic air, this would be probably quite a stormy pattern in fact. And as we progress beyond that, we do start to see a little bit more of an interesting jet stream pattern starting to develop. We do see some cold air to the north, some milder air to the south, could be some snow events there perhaps for Scotland. As we progress beyond that, you can see again more milder southerly winds and some colder incursions from the north as we head into the Christmas period, and more uh, sort of oscillating between colder and milder patterns, but no major cold from the CFS. And we head into January, potentially seeing some very cold wear there into parts of Europe, but not quite reaching the UK. And there we actually eventually see a cold blast, but still only lasting a couple of days. So generally, if we do continue to head through February, you can see that there is cold potential, but nothing major comes off in this latest CFS run. It's very interesting seeing that, and again, we'll continue to have a look at the CFS over the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months, uh, and we'll just need to keep an eye on, on what that does show, especially as we head into October, November time, where a little bit more reliability comes with it. Only a little bit more, as it is still highly unreliable. It's not great on the sort of five or ten day spectrum let alone the few weeks spectrum. But it's a bit of fun to see winter charts starting to appear. So in this video, we've had a look at the QBO, and as I said uh, a couple of minutes ago, when I sort of summarised it, it does have, uh, and it does bring a increased risk of a slower jet stream, a weaker jet stream, more amplification, potentially some more cold weather. But as we highlighted, it's not a guarantee. But it is, as I said, one climate driver that is in the cold direction not in the mild direction like it was, for example, last year. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens over the next few weeks, the next few months, and I am very much anticipating what uh, the next update of seasonal models show next week. And I'm unsure exactly which day they will be updated, but, uh, but I should hopefully uh, for the, our next uh, winter update to have all that new data. It'll be very interesting to see what it is showing. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed subscribing if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.